just bit me. My head hurts. <laughs> I really banged game, it. Game day's I, over. You didn't ask me if I was okay. We Didn't did, you I hear didn't... me smash my head? No. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Thank you. You're yes. welcome. <laughs> my name is Jamie. I'm Jeff. And we are here today to do another overview and review. Today's overview and review video is on Wild Space. Spas. Spas. This was sent to us for review from Asmodee Canada. So thank you to Asmodee thank Canada you. for sending this along. And it is published by Pandasaurus Games, Catch Up Games. And it was designed by Joachim Thom. Tom. Thom. Joachim Thom. 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 T-H-O-M-E. So as per usual, we are going to do a little bit of an overview of the game. Then we will jump into our review and our thoughts. You ready? Yep. I'm ready. It was upside down. Are you going to read the French too? Wild space est un jeu de cartes tactique dans, le, tactique dans lequel vous devrez, com Debe. devrez combiner efficacement <laughs> vos cartes. Combiner. <laughs> I did six years of French immersion. That's insane to me because I barely took any French and I feel like I could read I that way get, better. I used to get Lisa to do all my work oh for me. Oh my god, it shows. Wild Space is a tactical card game where you strive to combine your cards in the most efficient sequence possible. Each time you add new cards to your collection, you reinforce your crew, earn credits, and prepare your next big combo. Wild Space carries all the excitement of the best combo card games with short play time and easy to learn rules. Rules. Become the wealthiest explorer in the galaxy. Oh, it's upside down. That's Wild Space. Basically, this game is a card game. The mechanic is pretty much just set collection. Yes. So you are trying to collect cards and lay out cards that either match each other, match the animal type, or you're trying to collect different animal types. Mm -hmm. And then some of the cards, I can't remember what they're called, but they're the orange ones, they have special scoring conditions for the end of the game. So you may be looking for certain professions. So there's, I think, six different animal types that you can be. Yep. Rhino, monkey, bear. Octopus. Octopus, owl. How many have we done? I don't know. Rhino, bear, owl, octopus. Rhino, monkey, monkey, lizard. Lizard, monkey, monkey, yeah. monkey, I don't know, I don't think. Monkey, <laughs> bear. Monkey, rhino, bear, lizard, owl, octopus. Yep. And there's also robots. Robots. So yeah, it's a simple set collection card game where there's also a minor worker placement element to this as well. Mm -hmm. So you're given six, five, you're given five ships. The game runs over 10 turns, so 10 rounds. Yep. You place your ship on a landing bay or something like that. You take the action and then you can either your next turn place another ship, take the action, or you can move one of your ships up to take a different action that's at the top of the card. The actions are usually draw cards, play a card, yep. play a certain kind of card, and some of them have draw three cards. Draw three cards. And some of them have conditions where you have to discard a card in order to play a card. And then more landing areas will open up for your ship as you lay down more cards. Yeah. Pretty quick to play. Here it says it takes about 30 minutes. You can play one to five players, so you can play this solo. There's a solo variant. Yeah, I would say definitely it only takes 30 minutes to play. Yeah. It's pretty quick. It's pretty simple. I don't think we ever would have gotten over that. Mm -mm. This game, I would say, easy to learn, and it's just all about optimizing your points. That's a general overview of the game. Let's jump into the review now. Okay. Ready? Sure. We're going to start with the theme. So the theme is your animals in space. I think they're factions. I think the, each animal type is supposed to be a specific faction type. Yeah, and it, like each of the animals are, have like different professions. So there's like the techie ones. There's, mm -hmm. I don't know, one has a leaf. So maybe nature. There's, as Jeff calls them, squirt guns, but they are just guns. They look like squirt guns to <laughs> And me. so like there's different types of professions that the animals can be. And they're just trying to collect points. Like it says, become the wealthiest in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what the theme is. <laughs> 
It's very cute. It's a very cute um, game. The art's very cute, but it's very kind of like, I don't want to say pasted on, but kind of pasted on. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's like... I think the space you, theme makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's like a spacey theme with like cute animal factions, I mm -hmm. guess would be the... So you're exploring the galaxy, basically. It says, a new galaxy has just been discovered on the borders of the Empire. Commanding your spaceship, go forth and explore this new El Dorado full of treasures and mysteries. Your discoveries will allow you to explore expand your crew, recruit specialists of all species, get help from robots, and catch the attention of the Empire emissaries, who will entrust you with important missions. Who will be the wealthiest explorer in the galaxy? <laughs> I don't know that it really, I, the theme actually, I don't think really matters to the game. No, I, I, okay. I didn't get that. I didn't However, get any of that from playing this game. the orange cards are the emissaries, and those are the ones yeah. that are like, here are your objectives. Yeah. to score points by the end of the game. Yeah, like we didn't dive into the theme of this game. I'm gonna played. say that the theme is pretty loose here. Yeah, it's, it's a loosey goosey. Theme. It's not tight. No, it's not bad, but it's not. No, I think the theme of space exploration that makes sense because you're yeah. literally putting ships out. Yeah, taking an action to build out your crew. Yeah, and that's all that really I all that, that other ties all that other theme. context. I think is just kind of like narrative pieces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which, like I said, we didn't really dive too much into it almost reminds me a little bit of like star foxy oh okay you know what i mean yeah you remember Star Fox? Mm -hmm. He was in Super Smash Brothers. Um, that kind of like artwork. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. So that's the theme. I'm sure that was not helpful at all, but that's what we got. From. <laughs> Next up, we have the components. So this, I'm pretty sure just because we were sent this from a Canadian publisher from Asmodee Canada, we got the bilingual version. So we have both an English and a French version of the rule book. Yep. High quality paper. I'll talk a little bit more about the rules themselves in a bit. And then other than that, there's not much in Just this box. Stuff, so yeah. you have your little ship tokens. There's five different colors. You pick whichever color that you want. You have these little score markers. So like we mentioned before, some of the characters are called veterans and they have little medal of medals of honor on their cards. And then when you start the game, you have one character that is kind of like your crew leader. Mm -hmm. And every time you get a veteran, you move your little score token up on that card and it allows you to do a special ability, draw cards, gain victory points, play a card, that kind of thing. And that's what those tokens so are So that's for. what those tokens are. Are for. You have two of your home base landing zones for your ships. So as I mentioned before, there is a bottom action that you can take and then you move your ship up to take the top action. The top action on all of these is the exact same. So the bottom action is where it's at. Then you get more of these. So you have three, six, and nine level landing zones. So I would imagine that's where a bit of the theme comes in. I'm assuming those are different, like, Like worlds. maybe they're further away. They're different worlds and Because stuff. how it works is you randomly select a three, six, and a nine at the beginning of the game, and they go face down. So you can't right. see what the actions are. The first time somebody has three crew members down, you flip over the three ones. So it's like once your crew gets big enough to be able to fly a further distance, you have more options come up. I mean, the more I'm thinking about it, there is a, an underlying theme because that does make sense where yeah. it's like different terrain types, different planets or whatever, yeah. and you're uncovering them as you go. And the artwork on these is really nice. It's good quality. Yeah, very cartoony. Cardboard, yeah, very cartoony for sure. And then the last thing that comes in here is a honking stack of cards. So like I mentioned before, you have your, I want to say they're commanders. Probably something like, like that. Like your commander faction leader. Leaders yeah, your whatever. faction leader. And they are like every Everybody gets one. They're all different animals. And then it has different scoring things for your veterans up at the top. There's some cards for the Automa for solo version. And then all the rest of the cards here get shuffled for gameplay. And there's blue cards, orange cards, and then there's green cards, which are the robot. And each of them will have an animal. It will have what their profession is, and it will have some kind of an ability here. So as an example, this lizard, you can play her if you already have a leaf 
perfection in play and then it allows you to draw two cards yeah so really like this that's is kind of where the engine building comes yeah in so that's what i was definitely just about to say it's going to be like you lay that down and then that's how you start to build your engine on mm -hmm. your turn you can only play one card unless you play a card that allows you to do something else which might allow you to do something else kind so of a start, cascading effect yeah. yeah cascading them then you have your emissaries like i said before this is how you get more end of game scoring so this one would give you three victory points for every three tech professions that you have in front of you at the end of the game and that is everything that comes in this game it's just cards some tokens and some ships mm -hmm. that's it so very good quality components the artwork is really nice i like that it is very easy minimal setup mm -hmm. like there's just not a lot of stuff in this box and i really appreciate the colors that they picked for the ships. they are nice so I'm always purple, FYI. Well, so that's everything that comes in the components. Do you have anything to add on the component? All good. Very good. Yeah, really like the artwork. So next up is rules. The rules of this game, like I said, are very simple. I could explain it to you in easily less than 10 minutes. I read the rule book. I think everything in the rule book is laid out really well, with the exception of scoring. There isn't enough examples of scoring in this rule book, in my mm -hmm. opinion, specifically for the solo variant. So I have played this game solo yep. and I played it, I think, three times solo and I still don't know whether I won or lost because it's just not very clear on how that scoring works. Because sure. it is a little bit different than sure. regular yeah, scoring. Fair. So, yeah, I mean, I think I taught this to you. Very quickly. quickly. I mean, it's, yeah, again, set collection, engine build. So, yeah, and it, there's only one there's of There's only two so things many you things do. you can do, <laughs> and it's very limited. You're, you're basically placing a token to take an action. Yeah. Which then allows you to draw cards, play cards, and that's it. That's it. Your turn, you could do one of two things. You yeah. can place a ship and take the action, or, or you move can move ship. a ship yep. and take the action. That's it. So the only place where the rules actually come into play are what those actions are. Yep. And like we said before, the actions are pretty straightforward. It's draw cards, play a card... Um, do the action that's on your card. Mm -hmm. And it's all iconography. It's all um, iconography, yeah. There's no written text or anything, which is actually really cool. If you knew how to play this game and you had a German version of this game or French, French or English yeah. or whatever, if you didn't weren't dependent on reading the rule book. Yeah, this is totally language independent, which is why, like I said, we have the French and the English rules. There's no text on the cards. Mm -hmm. So you can read either of the rule books and completely understand this game. And the iconography is very minimal too. It's Mm -hmm. there's it's very very simple yeah. very basic very simple mm -hmm. you can get this to the table very quickly yeah. after buying it yeah. like the one thing uh there's not many how to play videos on youtube so if you rely on video tutorials z garcia from the dice tower had a review of it and in their reviews they typically do a rules overview as well so i watched that and that was a little bit helpful but mm -hmm. i don't really think you need a video for yeah. this one now Gameplay and replayability. This game is very quick to play. It is easy to learn, but I do think that in order to like master and optimize your points, it takes a lot more brain power than you would think that it does. I mean, things can cascade pretty quick with the cards. Mm -hmm. You know, like play a card, which allows you to play another card, which then may allow you to play another card, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. I don't think it takes a ton of brain power though. Don't think. I don't know. Well, like, like a game, like in comparison to a game like Red Rising? No, I mean to optimize like what you have going on in front of you. Sure. It's like, yeah. when do you play this to get this? And you know, there's times when we're like, oh, I only have three matching things and oh yeah. crap, I didn't actually get six different things to score me points. And yeah, there's... You, there's a lot to pay attention to. Like on the orange cards, the end of game scoring. As Jamie mentioned, you're trying to do set collection. I tend to play it like right from the get go. I look at my cards that I have and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go after like the bear faction. Yeah, that's who we went after. And Dad bears. there's a little market area or wherever recruitment area that you recruit new people to your, mm -hmm. you draw cards from and you could get hosed on that. Yep. You know, you might not get another bear the rest of the game. And then you kind of have to go after one of each because you can score for if you have like six separate action types, stuff like that. There is some strategy, enough strategy to keep someone like myself interested because again, like you have to make decisions early on on how you want to build your engine. Yeah, exactly. And like last game, I wanted to get one of each animal because for every set of six, 
you get 15 points. Mm -hmm. And I got everyone except for the stupid owl. The owl never came up. So the whole game, I'm drawing off the top of the deck because yeah. you can do that too, hoping to get an owl and I never got it. Yeah. So what I was working on for the most of the game was kind of like wasted. Yeah. Yep, that can happen. Like I said, I played this solo. So we played this at two players and then I played it solo. I think the solo game is pretty good. It comes... Is that a bug? Yeah. It comes with little Automa cards. So basically the Automa character gets their own little commander and then they get their own little ships, but it tells you... Teamwork. <laughs> Got him! It tells you specifically, uh, you choose which ship to move and then it'll tell you which cards from the recruitment area to discard or which cards to draw. The Automa player is constantly taking cards that you don't really have control over. So there might be a card you're going for that they end up taking. Mm -hmm. So I think the solo, if you're looking to get into solo gaming, this would be a very easy place to start. I don't know that this is a game that I would reach for to solo, but I had fun. With, I think the it only- depends on what you're looking for, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's a, such a, well, I don't solo game at all mm -hmm. but there's such a wide spectrum of like totally like like i said if you're looking to get into soloing if you want something easy that you can set up really quickly play in like the solo version you could play in easily 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. i think it was good and i played it three times solo and i i enjoyed it every time that i played with the exception of the scoring i still like i said i don't know whether i won or lost i have no that idea it seems weird to me I know, but I couldn't, like, there's one thing. I might take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, you take point. a look at it because I could not figure it out. So that's the gameplay. Replayability, I think it has some replayability. I don't know, like, it has a lot of cards and basically every time the cards come up, you're going to have different combos and stuff. I don't know that it's something that I would reach for to replay all the time. This would be something that I would recommend to my buddies who are starting to get in the hobby. Yep. This is this mechanic. This is a set collection and engine building mechanic you should play this to see how it works mm -hmm. and how how you feel about it mm -hmm. i think this game's perfect for that for something some people like us if we want to play something quick like this is going to live on a similar shelf as like king domino mm -hmm. silver bullet those quick hitters that yep. were like we have 20 minutes we want to play a quick game yeah that's where that's going to live yeah but if we're doing like a board game day or something heavier unlikely Unlikely. But if you're learning and want to learn this, I feel like it is something you would constantly go back to. Critiques. I think for me, the critique is that I don't find it gives a ton of variety in the actions that you can do. Even with the higher like landing zones that open up, some of them are still just draw three cards. Yeah, so I, I wish that there was more variety in the action selection when you're like laying your little ship down. Mm -hmm. I also wish that like you could block other players. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of player interaction with the exception of like, oh, I can see Jeff's going yeah. for bears. Maybe I'll take a bear. Agreed. But like where I put my ship, Jeff can also put his ship. It's just you can't put your ship in the same spot. This goes to our we prefer take that bias. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish that I could have screwed him over a little that's, bit more. That's an us thing. One thing I wish, one action I actually wish they had was I wish you could look in the deck. I wish I could draw three cards off the top of the deck see those three cards put two on the bottom and keep one right or yeah. something or i don't know if there was was is there an ability f to wipe the i don't think so the no. board mm -mm. again just if you're doing a deck a set collection i just wish i had a little bit more control. manipulation and control over the cards yeah that's true yeah i think more action ability and even if they're like i'd like to see if there was like a beginner and an advanced level yeah, yeah. that you can play like flip the boards like yeah. you know some games do that because i do find that if you are somebody who plays a lot of games i think it's it's fun but i think you might get a little bit bored of it yeah ne wish i had a little bit more variability in it yeah but again it depends on the audience like totally yeah if this game was designed and published with with new gamers in mind i think it's perfect, it's perfect. yeah for me i just wish that it had some more selection and a little mm -hmm. bit more take that yeah i think that's fair cool. that's pretty much my only thing and you mentioned i didn't play it solo but maybe a little bit more clarification around the single player scoring definitely i but, wish that there was like a whole page on scoring because it gives you like a few examples but there was one where it's just like a blank white box remember i was like what does this mean yes i remember and that it's actually not came up in there and we yeah. just assumed we're like oh maybe it just means whoever has the most cards the most cards yeah we just it's made like that assumption white symbol with a plus i think no it's just a white box 
fan. I remember that coming up in our play. We were like, we yeah, to Jamie's point, we assumed it meant whoever has the most cards. Yeah. But. So I think the rule book could use a little bit of work in terms of scoring. But Fair. other than that, I think it's fine. And it's possible it's in there. We just skipped over it a couple times. But I mean. Rip that thing front to back. So those are our critiques. Final thoughts. I think this game is fun. I definitely, what? Yeah. I think games are fun. It's okay to say that. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying every time you always start with that. Well, I think it's fun. That's your go-to. I think this game is fun. I think it is cute. I think that if you're looking for, like, just like Jeff said, a quick game to play, you might want to pull this out. And if you have friends that are new to the hobby, you're like, hey, let's play this game. This would be a great cottage game. It would be. And it's quite small, so it actually would make pretty good travel, travel game. game. Yeah, yeah overall, my, I like it. My final thoughts on this are kind of twofold. One, so I have buddies right now that are kind of asking to borrow games and stuff. I don't even think I told you this. No. Dan asked to borrow a couple games. I suppose. Anywho, um, this is one of those games that I'd probably lend to some of my buddies who are starting to get into the hobby to just say, again, this is the mechanic of this game. See if you like it. If you don't, we'll move on mm -hmm. to something else that you might like. Or if you do, play it enough that you get used to it. And then I'll provide you some other examples of this mechanic to, to try out. Secondly, like to Jamie's point, if I want to play a quick selection game. Set collection. Set collection. Quick selection game. <laughs> quick set collection game. Uh -huh. This would be the one. This would be the one. Yeah, this would be the one. I think it's a great light game. It's great for intro people into the hobby. And I think that's where it lives. Would be great to kind of have on a shelf at a cottage. We always <laughs> We really that. need a cottage. We always talk about cottages. Someone want to buy us a cottage? Please. That'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. Anywho, I really liked it. It yeah, was fun. Yeah, I did too. I had a good experience with it. Yeah, when I first started playing this, remember you were gone and I texted you and I was like, I really like this game. Yeah. So I do like, I yeah, really like it. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with it. And I love the art. I wish, I missed this in the critique, but like, could they not have put some cuter animals in here? Like, why is there an octopus in here? Why is there a lizard? I don't care about that's, those animals. That's your bias showing. No, there should be like a dog or Again. a squirrel would have been really cute. Bias. I don't know, something cuter than a stupid octopus. Anyways, those are our thoughts on Wild Space. Once again, thank you to Asmodee Canada for sending this to us for review. If you are interested in getting this game or any other game, the first place you should start is your friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, it is the Boardroom Game Cafe, which is located on... Barrington. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly where it is. All of their Sweet. information will be right here, point, as well as down below. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing to us here at Foster the Meeple. You can join us on our Discord, where we have all the fun chats. If you're interested in supporting us, we also have a Patreon. All of that information is down below. We also have social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Foster the Meeple. And you can follow us there too. And I think that's it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <coughs> Something hit my lungs. <laughs> it's probably that little fly. It did feel like something flew in, like a fluff or something. <laughs> Ew. Anyways, that is all that we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Better days. My tooth hurts so much. Oh, weird, because it's 2.30. Is it actually 2.30? It might be. Oh my it god. Is? <laughs> <laughs> it's 2.30. <gasps> It's 2.31. They're never going to believe us. One second. I got to get rid of all these. It's 2.31. And I said 2.30. Can you see it? It's 2.31. And the Jeff perfect... said it's 2.30. It's the perfect 2.30 joke. I just want you to be in a better mood. I'm in a great mood. No, you're not. Why are you in a sassy mood? I just smashed my head on the deck. But you were in a sassy mood before that too. Did you not sleep good last night or something? No, I didn't. Are you hungry? No. It's okay. Yeah, if I wanted to play a quick set collection game. The looks you give me are deadly. It's so mean.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board game music. That's not gonna do. Why? That was too down. You are down. Your your energy is bringing me down. My energy is fine. No, Jeff, it's at about a five out of ten. Learn how to put it on for the camera. It's about a five out of ten right now for you. Let's do that again. Usually you're a ten out of ten and I'm a five out of ten. I smashed my head, so my brain. You're, you are you are looking at the screen right now because we're not recording. Hello, right. Mm. What was wrong with the first one? I gotta change it up every once in a while. No. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. I'm not gonna be able to use that. Ugh, why? Because do you see? It's fine. It's not. Hello everyone and welcome. <laughs> so basically, it's just super, super, super. I didn't have as much pep today because my yeah, I know hurts. you're in such a no. It's poor it's mood. literally because all like from here it goes like this, Jeff. Look at me. I'm looking at you in the monitor. Okay, it goes like this, and then it goes into my ear and down my jaw right here. And it just hurts, it aches. Z Garcia from the Dice Tower had a review of it. You always know. <laughs> I know, well you're like. 